For those of you familiar with the channel, you know I am obsessed with pizza making and I've been working over the last few years to really perfect my craft. But today we're breaking away from tradition to once again scour the world of TikTok for the craziest pizza creations. The goal is to research and recreate to see if the hits actually stand up to the recipes in real life. All right, so we've got burrata toast at 3.5 million from the Josh Elkin burrata toast. I saw Haley Bieber make this pizza on TikTok and had to try it for myself because who doesn't like burrata on oh, pizza? Starting off I with know. a large oh, round I've loaf of sour. This. Yes, Haley Bieber had some type of viral burrata smash. And I guess this guy's recreating sourdough it. bread, spreading on some salted butter. It Definitely lost. should have let it get softer. The original recipe called for truffle you know, oil, but I'm not really that down TikTok. with truffle. So I use some basil and oregano infused olive oil instead. Once the bread gets golden brown and toasted on both sides, I started mm. with the tomatoes and I'm using yellow and red heirloom tomatoes, hit them with a lemon and olive oil mixture and a little bit of flaky salt and let them sit in that for a bit. And then back to the toast and this oh. burrata. Now nothing fancy here, just ripping it apart. All right, so I don't know like, okay, I know Hallie, Bieber, married to Justin Bieber, obviously. I don't know her culinary background, but clearly she's got something because there's technique involved. I don't know if she, you know, was in Italy, she saw this recipe or it's passed down from someone. She just created it on her own. And spreading it over the toast evenly. Once that's done, place the dressed tomatoes on top, followed by mm. some grated Parmesan cheese. Then Ooh. this goes in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. When it comes out, add some warm marinara on top, followed by some more grated Parmesan cheese, a little bit of dried oregano, and for some heat, some dried red pepper flakes. Really interesting, you kind of have a reverse pizza here. Here, where you melt the cheese, then you're adding warm marinara to the top. And I don't mind it. I actually, a lot of times when I'm at a pizza place, I ask for extra marinara just to kind of dip. So this is Super Pop that back in the oven for another 10 minutes and then you can eat it as Damn. is or you can cut it into wedges like a real pizza. Whoa. Wait, is this the guy from Epic Meal Time? I knew it, I knew it. So obviously you get a lot of hacky recipes on TikTok, which to me are usually a pass, but when you get the hack mixed with some techniques and refinement, you might have a smash hit. So it turns out that Haley Bieber's pizza toast took over the world of TikTok for like a week or a few weeks. I tracked down her original recipe because I wanted to get fluent with her version. And there are some minor differences. I'm gonna kind of choose my favorite parts of both Josh's and Haley's recipe and try something out that's honestly a little bit different. So Josh just took a knife and hacked his sourdough bread straight in half like this, which is a bit sacrilege. For me, since I've got a nice crusty loaf like the Haley Beaver version, I'm just gonna do some nice thick slices. That's a good inch right there. I've got some nice room temp butter. Josh didn't like truffle oil, but I am going with the original Haley Bieber truffle oil spritz. Butter on this side and a little trough on that side as well. Gonna get that in the uni. Give me a quick little toast on both sides. Oh wow, that is instantly bubbling up in there like three seconds in. We're cruising at 7.30, a little higher than your standard oven. We can actually see this browning before our eyes. And the bottom is nice and toasty. Oh, damn, we got to get that out. Okay, yeah, that was quick. That was like 30 seconds. <laughs> I didn't even have time to prep my tomatoes. So I'll do it now. So I've got one yellow heirloom tomato and a few plum tomatoes. And I'm just going to cut these into some thick slices. Flaky salt, a little bit of dried oreg, touch of olive oil, and just a squeeze of lemon. Let that sit for a minute. Let's work on these toasts. The star of the show, some nice creamy burrata. I think one burrata ball per toast will be perfect. We'll do one yellow version and one red. And then on with the grated parm. These go back in the oven. Now he said oven at 350, so we gotta really keep an eye on these. We're cooking much higher. All right, it's been about 30 seconds. Burrata is definitely starting to melt. Actually, a Vito tip, if you're getting too crispy on the bottom, just put it on the pizza peel. Thank you, Vito. Maybe the butter on the bottom wasn't the best move. Now, I prepped this pizza sauce yesterday, really simple. Just a really nice crushed can of tomatoes, a drizzle of olive oil, some dried oregano. I like it spicy, so I added some chili flake, created in one garlic clove, a few sprigs of fresh basil, and I just stirred that up and let it sit for a day. Now we'll give that a spoon of the marinara now. This already has the oregano and chili flake in it, so I don't need to add it. A little bit more the parm. And now I'm just gonna pop that back in the oven just to heat up. 
Let's see what we got going on on the inside. All right, wow. So I was a bit concerned cooking a toast in a pizza oven, which is made of course from cooking pizzas from raw fermented dough. But we've got a nice fluffy interior, a little bit charred on the outside. We've got some leopard markings here and everything is nicely melted. Like all pizza making, I could definitely improve the next time I make this. Wow, that's so amazing. Holy shit. So all of these flavors are simple pizza ingredients, but it's in the technique. It's how they're actually layered. And I think Haley Bieber, she did an incredible job. Plus the addition of burrato, which is unique, of course. It tastes like a pizza, but it has a level of gourmetness that is incredible for like a quick snack that you're throwing together in a few minutes. So this version was a combination of both Haley's and Josh's recipes. I'll give it a 4.5 out of five spatulas. It's so good, but it's still not a pizza, it's a toast. All right, mozzarella, snap pea, and prosciutto pizza. Sounds delicious. If that was on a menu, I'm probably ordering that. 2.3 million views from Lindsay Eats LA. Sounds very LA to be honest. Yeah, like super fresh. Ooh. Oh, this is quick. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that looks great. That is so California right there. That's like the refined version of California Pizza Kitchen. I gotta watch that again though, that was so quick. We've got some type of Parmesan going on the crust, fresh mozz, prosciutto. Okay, opens the snap peas. Really refined, I like this. That looks awesome. That is like the key to TikTok right there is 15 seconds, you hit me with just inspiration. I don't necessarily need to know how to make that exactly, but I wanna make something like that right now. Now, Lindsay's eating LA and this is the ultimate LA pizza to me. Very California-esque with just a lot of freshness and not a traditional pizza, but for me, I like this style of pizza. If you're cooking a bunch of pizzas for a party, as long as you have a few classic margaritas, you throw something like this in the mix, it's nice and fresh, it's light, and your guests are gonna be happy. Most likely, we gotta try it to see if it's good. So we're gonna start off with the dough. So last night I made my classic overnight pizza dough recipe. And it's really simple. It's a 65% hydration dough recipe that bulk ferments in the fridge overnight to give it a nice slow fermentation for extra flavor. And then this morning I took the dough out, I shaped a few balls and boom, here we go. Ready for some pizza making. So I'm just gonna take one of these dough balls, pop that on, start shaping. Let's see what I can remember from the Vito video. A little stretchy stretch and Voila. The parm tree, nice base of that. And then she hit it with some pep onto the pizza peel. Oh, that didn't work out. Let's try that again. <laughs> Tried to be a hero like Vito and it just didn't work out. But that's all right, it's all there. <laughs> oh yeah, that slipped off nice and easy. We'll close that and just keep an eye on it. Take a look. Ooh, that thing is puffing up in there. Rotate it back in. I'm happy. Let me check the bottom. Oh yeah, happy with that. Olive oil, grated parm again. She just ripped up some mozzarella. Fresh prosciutto, just gonna kind of rip that up. So I think she broke open those snap peas to take them out of the shell. Fresh basil. There's a jar of something that I can't really tell. I'm gonna say it's oregano, just a little bit of that. A little lemon juice. This is some balsamic and a little bit of olive oil. A touch of some flaky salt. And that is a masterpiece right there. One of the more fun pizzas I've ever assembled. I'm very tempted to throw this back in the oven. I think I'll take one slice, try it like this, and then toss it back in. Taking this half, tossing it into the oven. I've got a beautiful slice of pizza with every ingredient on it in one bite. Mmm, mmm. I think this thing is almost done. Let's see. Yeah, I hear it calling for us. There we go, some melty mozzarella, a little crispy prosciutto. All right, back to the tasting. I thought it was gonna have more of an issue with the fresh mozzarella on there, not actually melted, but you've got that crispy Parmesan crust that works really well, balanced with the freshness of the toppings. I love the sweetness of the balsamic coming through with the salty prosciutto, and then those little fresh pea pops. I don't know if it's a pizza, I can't confirm that, but it is an incredibly 
tasty flatbread. One of the best I've ever had, but I really want to try this right now. Wow. Now that, I don't know, that might even look better. That tastes more like a pizza. Sure. So with the cooked version, everything now kind of melts together. Your tongue can't really pick out those ingredients as specifically as it can with the fresh. I don't think it's necessarily better or worse. I would actually say I prefer this just because it's so different, it's so unique, but the toasted is also an incredible option. So Lindsay Eats LA, I love the effort of just layering flavor here. I love the freshness. I'm giving it a 4.75 spatulas out of five. Good work. Vegan spinach pizza, 4.2 million. Valley Hearns, she's great. She's got real great vegan recipes. I keep making this so bright sure green spinach dough. Okay. It's really simple and it makes a really good pizza crust. All you do is blend a cup of spinach and a tablespoon of olive oil, two thirds cup of flour. Nice. A little bit of baking powder. Wait, oh, okay. So she's using baking powder. Did she use yeast? and some salt. Her recipes are always super unique. I've never thought to blend up, what did she do? She blended up spinach into the dough, it's genius. Then just roll it out. All right, so that's certainly not a pizza dough. <laughs> That is a baking powder dough. That has zero fluff that came right from mixing. Obviously no rise if you're not making yeast. Okay. Kind of like a spinach flatbread. Okay, what, what's going on here? She didn't tell us what she's topping it with. Flip, top, and bake. So we're kind of left up for interpretation here. I don't know what type of sauce she has on the bottom. It looks like lentils, all types of crazy vegan shit there. I just got very confused. So she's baking in the sprouts, which is highly questionable. You'd think these fresh ingredients like that would maybe get sprinkled on top, but I don't know. And then this is some type of like herb sauce, which looks good. Oh, pfft. we've got a vegan cheese alert. Look at the melt on that. That is complete bullshit. And you know, that's not good. <laughs> and then you she dips it in some type of homemade ranch. The toppings are kind of endless. And the yep. texture's kind of like a flatbread. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see this side section. Yeah, she could use a little more uh, puff in that crust. It's a nice color on there. It's really good. I think what we do with that is just take her inspiration and make it better. I love what she's doing, but we can we can enhance. So I typically don't make vegan pizzas, but what really caught my eye was this green dough. There's just something about that concept of infusing veggies into your dough, which I have never done before. You think wheat, water, yeast, salt, and that's it. But now we're entering into a whole new world. So what I did last night was I made myself some green pizza dough. So what I did was I loaded up a blender with a bunch of spinach, added a little bit of olive oil, and to really get a nice consistency, I added about half a cup of water and just blended that until it was a completely smooth spinach liquid. Now, rather than just using baking soda like Bally Hearns did, I actually made a true pizza dough from this point. I measured out the flour, added my yeast and salt, and just replaced the water content with this spinach water and kneaded that up until I got a nice smooth dough, let that ferment in the fridge overnight until it doubled in size. And then this morning I shaped up a few green pizza doughs. And that's what I have right here. So I'm just gonna shape this into pizza and add my toppings. So she had a lentil mixture as the base. So I figured I would make lentils, but use the pizza sauce from the first recipe. So I fried up some onions and garlic in a pan, added in about a cup of lentils and about a half a cup of the pizza sauce. Top that with some water and cook that on low heat until the lentils were nice and tender. So this is a lentil pizza sauce mixture. <laughs> kind of like it. These actually spread on really nice. Pizza lentil base. Now I said I wouldn't do it, but for the good of the recipe, we've got some vegan mozzarella shreds. They certainly look like mozzarella, but the ingredients, it's just oil and starch and powdered cellulose. Oh, also something called mozzarella flavor. I don't know how they get mozzarella flavor. I taste the mozzarella flavor. <laughs> That's about it. And then just oil and starch, to be honest, in like cheese form. Pop that on, we'll see if it melts. So there's your base that's gone in the oven. I have no idea how this 
fake Mots is gonna react. Also how the green dough is gonna react. Maybe that spinach will somehow change the puff. Who knows? We'll find out in a few seconds. So today's video of course is all about making pizza, which also happens to be what today's sponsor Uni is all about. Honestly, there's no other brand that makes cooking pizza at home easier. I've been using their ovens for years and Uni just keeps on improving their game. And this Uni Caro 16 is an absolute beast. It's one of their newest models. I freaking love it. Wow, look at that. <laughs> what is going on with that cheese? That's crazy, those crispy lentils on the outside and this just non-melting mozzarella. I feel like this had a much better chance with just regular mozzarella on it. She had some sprouts. I'm going on with some arugula microgreens. It looked like a pesto to me, so I made a pesto. It certainly looks sexy, very unique. This one is a true wild card. Let's see what's going on in that crust. Whoa, that's wild green pizza dough. This is one of those bites where I have absolutely no idea what's coming my way. There's no taste experience I can judge this off of right now. That mozzarella cheese just does not taste good. It's kind of like an Indian flatbread with those lentils, and green chutney to some degree on top. I think if you added a paneer cheese to this instead, maybe crumbled fresh on top, that would be the perfect Indian pizza. That spinach crust is incredible. That's the breakthrough of this recipe. I'm gonna give this 3.2 spatulas. I think I will certainly take inspiration from adding vegetables, adding different ingredients to the dough. Why not? This spinach dough is delicious, but that vegan cheese is just knocking it down on the scales. We've got Vodka Square Pizza, 10.9 million views, devour power. One of our favorite pizzas oh, in New York. that looks so, oh yeah. As Vito would say, the crunch. <laughs> that was some crunch. The vodka square pizza from oh, Crispy Pizza so in Decker good. Heights, Brooklyn. That was it. <laughs> that was it. That looks so good. I might do a little bit more research on this and make it. I have never made a vodka sauce in my life, which means I have never made a vodka pizza as well. And I'm interested in both and guess what? I've got some vodka right here. So what I'm gonna do is just take the remaining tomato sauce. This is like a bonus recipe. Add the tomato sauce. Well, pizza sauce. It's already got the flavorings in there. Heavy cream and a little bit of vodka. Mix that up. And I'm going to get that on the burner. And in the meantime, I've got a square dish. Always want a good bit of olive oil when you're going deep dish. And I'll just stretch this out right in there. Perfect. We'll let that sit for about five minutes while that cooks. And since the gluten's tightened up a bit, we'll spread it out again. Looking good there. Let's give it a taste. Oh, really nice. Tastes like pasta. So I'm just spreading this out a little bit to the corners, good as I can. We'll go on with that vodka sauce and then just shred it on mats. It was pretty marbled from what I remember. So I just realized this was made in a nonstick pan. Hopefully it can handle the temperature of this oven. And we'll let that cook. I'll keep an eye on it. It's been about two minutes. I just want to give that a peek. You can see we're puffing on the one side, so I want to turn it. Oh yeah, we're getting deep dish all right. Oh, this looks fucking awesome. Let's take another peeky. That looks insane. All right, I think it needs another maybe one minute. All right, we're ready. Coming out. Uni for the win right there. Pan held up, Let's see the bottom. Oh yeah, that is perfectly crispy. So posted by Devour Power on TikTok, but this pizza is from Crispy's in Diker Heights from Brooklyn. Let's see what you got. I mean, right away you got that incredible just deep dish action going. You can taste that oil in the crust. The vodka sauce is pretty subtle. When I tasted it straight up, it's like, oh yeah, that is penne a la vodka all the way. Here, it's pretty subtle on the pizza, but it's nice. It's smooth, it's creamy. It really melts together well with that cheese. It's not like, you know, life-changing compared to just a marinara sauce, but it's nice, it's not bad. So I'll give it a 
four out of five spatulas. At least my version, you know, maybe their version is a five out of five. So there you go, four different pizzas that were all very unique. So thanks again to all of the creators for really bringing it this episode. And thank you to Uni for their incredible pizza ovens and for making all of this possible. Uni strives to build a deeper connection to pizza. And with an oven like this, I can now bring the craft of pizza making to my own home. So hopefully you're inspired to make some pizza as well. The weekend is coming up quickly. So get cooking, my friends.